Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. You guessed it, it's another chatty get ready with me today. Every single time I film one of these, I promise myself that I'm gonna do one um, when I do like some cool, like fun alternative makeup. Um, and then I just don't. <laughs> so we're doing, I'm doing another like simple look today um, because I'm shooting some pictures uh, for my social media and for some promotional things. And yeah, I keep meaning to do a fun makeup look when I film one of these, but I'll remember one day. Today, however, I wanted to sit down and talk with you about, I guess, like my career as a body piercer and more importantly, how I knew that this was the right career path for me because I, I see a lot of people online who ask me, like, obviously everyone wants to know, like, how do you become a piercer and how do you get into it? But I also get asked a lot, like, how did you know that this was the right career path for you? How did you know that you, like, wanted to commit to this and, like, this is what you wanted to do? And I think that's a really solid question to ask, especially with how often uh, we see piercers, really good piercers, uh, leaving the industry. Because we do. We see it a lot where people who've been piercing, you know, 5, 10, 15 years are leaving piercing in droves to pursue other workplaces. And they're talking about piercing being not enjoyable anymore, being burnt out, or all of those things. And I think for a lot of people looking to get into the industry or in their apprenticeships or early on as a piercer, seeing all these really awesome piercers leaving can be really intimidating and can really make you wonder um, if you made the right choice or if you're making the right choice. And I really wanted to make this video, A, as someone who really loves piercing, who really has like a huge passion for body piercing. Um, and I think this is my place. I think I've made the right choice in becoming a piercer. But also as someone who's outspoken about the flaws of the industry and about things that have happened to me in piercing that I do regret. Um, because there are things about my time in piercing that I don't like um, and that I try and speak out about so that hopefully other people don't have to have the same experiences. Now I know I have not had the same relationship with piercing that a lot of other piercers have because for me, like, there was never any question. Like there was never any doubt in my mind. There was never any regret. Like I knew from the jump that piercing was for me. Like basically from the time my first studio offered me an apprenticeship and I started working there all the way through up until now, there was never, there was never a doubt in my mind. I never had any moments where I was like, oh, should I be doing this or am I making the right call? Like I just knew piercing was for me right away. And I know a lot of other piercers <clears throat> who say that they felt the same, but I also know a lot of piercers who say that like they have not felt the same and they have had a lot of moments where they were wondering if they were making the right choices and things like that. For me, my passion and love for piercing started out like as a client. I was getting pierced and I was spending time at the studio and I like absolutely loved it. And it resonated with me like significantly more than tattoos or anything else that I was getting done. Like that I think is a big thing. It's like it's one thing to be interested in the industry as a whole to like want to get tattoos and piercings and have fun colored hair and dress certain ways. But I had always had like a very electric draw to piercing specifically that was not there for me with tattooing or with hair or with any other element of like body modification or like changing my body's appearance or things like that like piercing called to me above everything else and I think if you have that feeling you kind of know you have that feeling like when you you know, when you think about something, when you think about doing it, when you are doing it, when you're reading about it online, when you're talking to people about it, you just have this like unbelievable fire in your heart for the thing at hand, whether it's music, whether it's piercing, whether it's cooking, whether it's tattoos, whether it's medicine, like you just have that passion or you don't. And I don't necessarily think that passion is a prerequisite for any job. I think people can do jobs and be successful and be happy with them without that type of passion. Um, but I will say I do think in piercing, it can make things easier to already have that passion, that fire for it. Um, but I would be remiss not to mention that it's a double edged sword because having that type of passion also makes you really likely to overcommit yourself and to not enforce healthy boundaries 
as far as like work life separation and throw everything you have into one little thing. And this is coming from someone who's a professional body piercer and then on the side creates piercing educational content on TikTok and on YouTube and on Instagram and runs a piercing related blog and then for fun and for free writes piercing history articles and catalogs a history of piercing and talks to other piercers about technique and offers advice and shadowing and stuff. Um, yeah, I kind of built my whole life around piercing and now at 28, I'm realizing what a huge mistake that was <laughs> and trying to build other things into my life like playing games and reading books and working out and just doing things that aren't 100% piercing or piercing related. Uh, so learn from my mistakes. It is great to have that fire and to have that passion and it will, I think, give you a little extra edge in an industry like this that is quite like a passion-based industry in the same thing, in the same way that I think that passion can give people an edge in things like music and arts and tattooing and any kind of creative industry. Um, but if you already have that passion, you definitely need to learn early on how to rein it in and how to still honor yourself and be true to yourself and take care of yourself while pursuing your passion. That way you don't overwork yourself or burn out. So when people ask me and they're like, how did you decide to become a piercer? How did you know piercing was right for you? I just knew. I just knew, okay? Like I just, I immediately already knew. <laughs> I started feeling this fire and this passion for piercing when I was in like my sophomore or junior year. So I was like 15, 16, 17, around there. And like, my like, ugh, miss. Hi, you're not... Thanks for flashing all of YouTube. This really appreciated. Now, I was an arts major at the time. Um, I was actually in high school and college at the same time for fine arts, and I thought that art was my passion, uh, obviously, because I was pursuing it very heavily by doing high school and college at the same time, but I... <laughs> I was insufferable. I like started incorporating piercings into all my artwork and to in like everything I was doing. Uh, and I, I was just like, oh, I just like think they're really cool. I can't believe I'm gonna post this on this video, um, but this is so cringy. This is a portrait that I did based off the sketchbook that it's in. I wanna say this is like junior year, sophomore year, sophomore year, I think. Um, so it's not very good. <laughs> so please don't be mean to me in the comments because I'm sensitive. Uh, but it was a portrait that I drew of myself with all the piercings that I wanted when I got older. And at this point in time, I had like, I, I definitely had like my tongue. I probably had some ear piercings. This might have been when I already had my first industrial, which didn't work out. Um... And I might have had my eyebrow pierced at this time too. So I had, I had like quite a few piercings already, but I wanted like a bunch. So this was me drawing like a self-portrait of myself in the future when I had all the piercings that I wanted. And it's so cheesy. But yes, I was, I was insufferable with it. And, and it also very rapidly became like my special interest. Um, I am neurodivergent. I have BPD. Uh, and I definitely have that brand of neurodivergency that breeds intense special interests and piercing became mine in no time. And honestly, having spoken to a bunch of other neurodivergent piercers, be it folks with autism or BPD or just any kind of neurodivergency, it seems like a common thread that a lot of us, like our special interest turns into our career and like what we do. And for a lot of us, piercing or elements of piercing became our special interest early on and now we're here. But I just knew I've just always known like I've always had there's there's just always been this unbelievable sense of rightness when I think about body piercing and when I'm in this industry and I'm doing piercing like it just my soul just knows that this is what I want to be doing and I'm sure some of you out here can relate to this especially if you are currently trying to become a piercer or looking for an apprenticeship it is it is not easy. It is cutthroat. It is competitive. It can be very hard to find a good apprenticeship. A lot of times you end up having to move. I had to move across the country for my last apprenticeship. Um, and it's just very cutthroat and it's very hard. 
it took me four years before I ended up in my like final apprenticeship where I actually started learning things correctly. And four years is an incredibly long time to spend trying to just get your start in an industry in a way you want to be. Now, I was working front of house or management positions in studios on and off during that time. There were time periods where I wasn't able to get a job in a studio. So I was working night shift in warehouses and at Walmart just to pay bills and make ends meet. But, but you know, I was 21 and I wasn't even a full-time piercer yet. I was still an apprentice. And I looked at these other people, especially others who had settled for less than great studios who were already branding themselves as full-time piercers and, and super experienced and all this stuff. And I, I kept asking myself like, am I making the right move? Like, am I making the right call? Obviously I knew I wanted to be a good piercer and I wanted to be a safe piercer, but that didn't make it any easier when I would get offers from these crappy studios for apprenticeships and I would turn them down because I knew it wasn't a good studio. I knew I wanted to be taught the right way. And I would watch someone else take the job and eight months later be posting online that they were a full-fledged piercer and they were going off on their own solo and they were doing all these things. And I was still an apprentice or still front of house or still just a manager. And I was like, I was hard. <laughs> it was so hard. But if I can give any advice to you all is that it is truly worth it to stick it out and learn the right way. And that if you really have a passion for piercing and you really want to be a great piercer, not only you really want to be a great piercer, but you really care about the clients. Um, it is worth it. It is so beyond worth it to stick it out. And I think that was what really got me through in those times when I had those doubts and I had those concerns is that I had had bad experiences as a client when I was younger and getting piercings. I had a philtrum done that was so unbelievably crooked and she pierced from the bottom up and accidentally embedded the needle in the tip of my nose while she was piercing. Uh, it was an awful, truly terrible experience and the whole way it was handled was bad. Um, she tried to say that like I moved and then she tried to say that my, my lip tissue was just weird and too thick and it was just like an entire nightmare. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to be the type of piercer who did those things to clients. And I, the part of piercing that made me fall in love with it was the amazing experiences I had with piercing, the empowering, affirming, life-changing experiences I had with piercing. And because of those experiences, I also knew how unbelievably devastating it was when I had bad experiences or piercings were done incorrectly and didn't heal. I knew what it felt like to cry my eyes out after having to retire my first navel piercing because I needed a floating navel and I saw someone who wasn't that experienced or educated and they gave me a traditional navel and it rejected right through my skin. Um, and I didn't want to do that to clients. And that compassion and that care and that empathy is a big part of what helped me stick it out when it seemed infinitely easier to take another path and just get my foot in the industry, get started as a piercer, and then figure out how to become a good piercer. Um, and now I realize that it wouldn't have been easier to do that at all, that in fact it was much easier and much safer to wait out and get the good apprenticeship first. Um, and I really truly have no regrets with the, like, the path that I took to get to where I am as a piercer today. And a big thing that I did was anytime those doubts or those concerns or those questions got stronger in my head and kind of shook my resolve to pursue piercing and become a piercer, um, I either got pierced or I did a suspension. There is truly no better way to like reset and reaffirm your resolve and your passion for this than to get a piercing or to do something piercing related because any doubts I had about this being where I was supposed to be or the path that I was on or what was happening um, just fully evaporated out of my brain when I got a new piercing or did a suspension and I felt that euphoria and that catharsis and that joy and I can't cry because I'm doing my makeup and I have to take pictures after this. Ah! <laughs> No crying, but it's just, it's so amazing. 
And I really think if you're called to this and if this is your passion, if this is the right place for you, that that you just know. And, and there is no better way to affirm that than sitting back down in the client's chair. Right. Even if it's not a piercing that you want to keep, even if you just get play piercings or you just let a coworker practice something on you or you just you just do something to have that sensation like it's still it's still so powerful and it still so strongly reaffirms that love and that drive and that desire toward the industry. I feel like as well, like another great way to determine if this is really something you want to do and something that I feel like uh, I wish more studios like offered uh, or were open to is like letting a non-piercer shadow for a day. Um, obviously not like technique based shadowing. Like this is not shadowing where like I think they should be, um, you know, like explaining how things are done or what the case may be. Um, but you know, if you have a good regular good client who you know, it seems interested in piercing and curious about the industry and has expressed it, I typically like to invite them to come and shadow for a day and like, spend a lot of time hanging up with the counter staff up front and seeing how that goes. And then spending some time with me for one or two piercings or three or four piercings, however the day goes, seeing me pierce and like not me teaching them how to pierce or talking about that, but just showing them the process of what it's like in the room, not in the client's chair and letting them kind of see it from a piercer's angle. And I think that's a really great way to kind of make up your mind, like, oh, am I, am I on the right path? Like, is this what I want? And I've had a lot of folks who have been very passionate about piercing who've come in and done that and been like, actually, like, this is not for me. Like, now that I'm really thinking about the type of client interactions that I have to have and, like, the emotional labor that being a body piercer can be, like, I don't know that I have that in me. Or sometimes there's people who are really passionate about the industry and they're really sure they want to be a piercer and they come in and they you know, they work on stuff and they shadow it and they go, actually, I'm way more excited about making body jewelry or working front of house and being a stylist or working in a management position. Um, I even know folks who are more excited about doing taxes and running a business and counting the numbers than they are about actually doing the poking. And getting into the room and getting to watch and observe can really help with that. Now, I know, I know a lot of studios don't offer this. I'm... <sighs> And I, you know, everyone's allowed to do what they want to do and I respect their comfort level and all that stuff. But for me, it is something that I will always be open to offering and that I do not mind. Um, obviously it's something that's pretty tricky to do while I'm traveling and guesting because it's not my studio. So it's not my place to have someone come and hang out in shadow. Um, but once I do eventually settle down at a studio, um, that's always something that I'm open to, especially for a good regular custom a customer I know and a client I know um, and having them come out and shadow and like hang out with me for the day and kind of really get a hands-on feel if this is something that they want to do. As I'm sitting down to film this I like kind of can't help but feel like I'm kind of doing a bad job because I sat down to talk about like piercing as a passion and like deciding that this is right for you and stuff and I don't know I maybe I am the wrong person to talk about this because it's just always been I want to like give you guys a list like a top five ways to know if piercing is right for you or like a checklist that you can go through and cross off and somehow like quantify um, and that's just not my lived experience and I just it's not an experience that I can speak to like I I have the experience of like like piercing has been my soulmate. Piercing has been my one true love from the moment I got my first real piercing, my nostril piercing, all the way up until now, I've just had this like unbelievable connection and tie and tug to body piercing. And I don't know any other way to describe it than that. Like when I read cheesy fantasy romance novels, and I read a lot of cheesy fantasy romance novels, if we're being honest, and I listen to people talk about soulmates and connections and things like that, I piercing is what makes me feel that way. The connection that I feel to this industry and to this art form and to my clients and to the fact that I get to do this every day, that's what makes me feel that like, it sets my heart on fire. I really recognize that that advice is probably not helpful to a lot of you, um, but I hope 
that some of you watching this have that same fire and that same passion and that same connection to piercing that I do. And I know that a lot of people feel that way because I've spoken with so many piercers who have this same feeling about piercing. And for those people, I hope that this video resonates with you and helps you feel affirmed and feel seen in your journey in becoming a piercer. And when I talk about this, it oftentimes makes me think of something that one of my really dear friends, Jake, said to me. Um, Jake Hinkle, he's a traveling body piercer. He's super amazing. Um, go follow him on Instagram if you don't. I'll pop his Instagram up um, on the video. But uh, he guested a lot at my previous studio icon. And when he did, he stayed with me and we would hang out. And there was one time when we were hanging out and we were going through some of my books about body piercing. Because as many of you know, I do body piercing historian type stuff. Um, so I have a lot of older books and we were thumbing through them and talking about it. Um, and I was talking about my experience in piercing and some of this history stuff and I remember Jake just got real quiet and I was like I'm sorry like am I rambling or babbling and he was like no it's just it's so interesting the like stark difference between the two of us as piercers and like what do you mean and he was like well you Lynn are a piercer you are a body piercer body piercing is in your blood it is in your soul like you are a piercer me Body piercing is my job. I show up, I go to work, I pierce, but what sets me on fire like you were talking about is not piercing. You know, it's the things that I do with my friends and my community outside of piercing. It's my games, it's things like this. But, but he looked at me and he was like, you are a piercer through and through. And I have never forgotten that compliment. <laughs> uh, I have cried over that compliment many times because it is so meaningful to me and I feel like so captures the like absolute love I have in my heart for this industry and for what I do and that I think a lot of us have and there's a lot of people that I've spoken to in piercing who feel the same where it's just they've just always known it's just always been that calling for them and I think the same can be said for a lot of different artistic fields. Like I've spoken to a number of musicians and hairstylists and makeup artists and painters and graphic designers and photographers who very much feel the same way. Like it is just their calling. Like it is just in their blood to, to do this creative thing. They have to sing, they have to dance, they have to paint, they have to write. Um, and I think piercing is very much no different in that for many of us, it is like this deeper thing that runs inside of us. But like I mentioned earlier, that passion is a double-edged sword. And if you have that type of passion, you definitely need to be careful that you don't let it just take control of you and run rampant and allow you to overwork yourself and burn out. But you know, on the flip side, I don't know that without that passion that I would have made it as a piercer. I truly don't know if I could have endured everything that I did through my apprenticeships and the process of getting into this industry and the things that I've experienced in this industry. I don't know if I didn't have that type of overwhelming, all-consuming passion that I could have experienced that and kept going. There is a place for piercers of all types in this industry, from those who have that passion and that fire to those for whom it is a job, and we all have a role to play that is important. But if you are the type of person who has that passion towards piercing, I would so encourage you to nurture it uh, and to care for it and to pursue this. And I would also use that passion as that motivation to stay on the path that is right, that is safest for you and for your clients that allows you to become the best piercer possible and not compromise or sacrifice just to get your foot in the door because I promise it's not worth it and it actually makes it way harder <laughs> to end up as a great piercer and you will live with a lot of the regret and the remorse of having done those bad piercings and hurt those clients and it's just not worth it. I feel like this video ended up so rambly and I'm just so sappy when I talk about piercing and I'm so like mushy about it that I, I really wanted to sit down and make this concise and instead I ended up just talking about how much I love piercing for whatever 20 minutes. Um, but if you'd like to see me talk more about things like this, um, like getting into the industry, piercing is my passion, 
um, experiences I've had both being pierced and doing piercings, uh, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for, as always, hanging out and letting me just ramble and chat. And I'm so excited to go take these pictures and I can't wait to post them and show y'all them. They're gonna be so cute. Uh, and yeah, have a great day. Bye.